Bobby, Bobby, quick, come on, wake up. We're gonna be late for the road show. No, 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 don't worry, it's all sorted. We're on our way. Welcome to the National Motor Museum at Bewley for the first of our Scrappy Challenge Road Shows. Oh yes, this shrine to all things automotive draws thousands of visitors every year. The museum is packed with over 250 of the most awesome vehicles ever created. And the palace grounds are a magnet for petrol heads from far and wide. But today, we've invaded the place with a bizarre collection of furniture. Furniture with a difference, because it's designed to race. We've taken Scrap Heap Challenge on the road to give the great British bodging public the chance to flex their mechanical muscles and compete in this unique event. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Scrap Heap Challenge Super Speedway! What we asked our backyard bodgers to do was to combine a bit of this with some of this. We've told them if it's in your house, put an engine in it and get ready to race it. So over the last five weeks, 16 teams from across the land have been fabricating some fabulously fast furniture. How fast is your spin cycle? Uh, about 1,200. Have you come far? From Aberystwyth. Oh, tiny! Across the border. Which small child did you have to chuck out of their cot to actually get this? Ben. We find it makes our marriage more successful. The rules are simple. The teams all race against each other in a series of knockout laps until only one piece of furniture remains. The riders of this piece of furniture will then get the once-in-a-lifetime chance to take on the Scrappy Paul Stars with a chance of winning this unique and valuable piece of silver-painted plastic. But who are the Scrappy Paul Stars? The All-Stars are the ultimate scrap heap team, featuring three of the greatest contestants of all time. Famous for his catchphrase, proper job, this mechanical wizard and West Country farmer smashed his way to victory as captain of the barley pickers. He reaps havoc wherever he goes. He is... Proper job! Andy Barnes. Next up is a big Ulster man who's never frightened to throw his weight around. He's a mountain of a man who captained the Hairy Hogs two years ago and terrorised his rivals in a chariot race from hell. He's king of the big bikers. He's Con Kelly. Completing our lineup is a man who captained last year's champions and grand champions, never afraid to wear his heart on his sleeve. He led the powerlifters through deep water and over rocky terrain. He's the champion forklift fettler that is Neil Paxton. Yesterday, we set the mission for our kings of scrap. All stars, you have been selected to represent the honor of the scrap heap because of three vital ingredients. You're very skillful, you're very ingenious, but above all, you are very cheap. <laughs> That's a boat right. <laughs> you have just 10 hours to construct an awesome accoutrement that must go head to head with the most formidable furnishings Britain has to offer. OK, All Stars, go on the sound of the gong. <laughs> the pressure's on for Andy, Con and Neil. Last year's All Stars team was soundly splattered at the Scrap Heap Tomato Throwing Trials by the Rocketeers with their Space Age Ketchup Cannon. This year, the Rocketeers have returned in fairy tale style. <laughs> now, last year you stunned us all with your Flash Gordon rocket and your Flash Gordon costumes. Do you think you're going to beat the All Stars again? We're, we're going to wipe the floor with them. Ha <laughs> ha, that's what we like to do. Building racing furniture has been a challenge for the Rocketeers and all our teams. But for one man, it's a way of life. Motorised furniture specialist Ed China 
actually makes his living from building souped-up suites and drivable divans. Ed's today's judge, and he's been checking out the furniture racers. Now, Ed, what do you think well, of the actually, level of engineering and skill that's gone into these? It's really good. I love the variety. That's yeah. only one, I think, is the chaps with a, a full kitchen. Yeah. Very wide, no ground clearance no. at all. I don't know how they're going to get around some of those corners. There is one electric one, which I'm very pleased yeah, to hit. Dinner to for see. one. It's, yeah. it's interesting because it's actually powered by an electric winch. But also, the course, it's really tight. It's now, very and... tight, actually. I think there's going to be a few vehicles that are going to have a problem with that. We've designed our sofa speedway circuit to push our team's driving skills to the limit. It's a combination of straights, chicanes and tight hairpins, which will challenge the vehicle's manoeuvrability more than their speed. A dark horse, and perhaps, I think they're getting a bit edgy, is the bar faders in that, in that's, that. Is that the, the one? Yeah. As soon as you look in the bar, you realise that's, that's, that's going to be quick. Movement. With the course set, it's time for the qualifying round, where we select the cream of today's races. All 16 teams will compete in a series of sudden death laps. The eight hottest household hell raisers will go through to the quarterfinals. For the rest, their racing days are over. And the eliminator round is underway. Suddenly, the track comes alive with the roar of engines and the flutter of fabric. I think the downforces they're getting off the shower curtain would be intense. <laughs> We've got furniture on two wheels, furniture on three wheels, and furniture on four wheels. There's diesel, petrol, and electric engines driving every conceivable household furnishing and appliance. Every second of this round is bursting with thrills. Oh, dear, the washing machine has boiled over. And spills. There is scenery going everywhere. Oh, the, he's lost his parasol. That's over the edge. As the Mad Hatter makes a wrong turn, the fairy tale's over for defending champions, the Rocketeers. There's a massive crash. The first serious crash. It's the vehicles that combine speed and manoeuvrability that win out in the end. That was an impressive wow, time. Wow, that is seriously fast. Wow. So these are the eight teams that will battle it out in the Sofa Speedway quarter-finals. The Blackpool players' pool table will try to knock the stuffing out of the Bewley recliners' chaise long. The Rubber Duck racers go tub-to-tub -to -tub against the Bar Faders. The Cyber Aces' high-speed PC will try to short-circuit Dinner for One's electric table. And in our dream match, the king-sized Coopers fight the big bedded bubble boys in a duel of the divans. They're a team of crack aerospace engineers. Tim, Nigel and Captain Andrew are planning to burn around our circuit in a beefed up bathroom. For our design, we're using a Fit Panda because it was free and it's quite a nice small engine so we can hide it away quite easily in our bathroom suite. And then we we're going to build the rest of the bath and the toilet around that. The worst thing we've really had with the, the engine was trying to keep it all in one piece with the suspension, it's all integral. But the worst job by far was sorting out the plumbing. The toilet we had was second-hand and wasn't a really nice job to extract. It might not smell too good, but is it ready for the big job? <laughs> oh, I think we've got a fantastic chance of winning. This is a, a fantastic little panda and with a rubber duck at the controls, we'll be, uh, we'll be flying down the track. Now, <clears throat> am I all right to sit on the loo here? Yes, that's fine. Oh, it's all glamour in this job. Now, when you made this, what were the main problems that you had to overcome? Uh, trying to fit a, such a big engine in such a small space, really. Um, How big is your engine? It's one litre. Now, did you take it out for a little test? Yes, we did. Do you don't see that many bathroom suites being driven around the place, although there is one. Just over there, Bath Vader. Yes. The Dark Lord, also known as Steve. I'm a bit worried about that one. The rubber duck racers are right to be worried. This race can have only one name. Bath Wars. Not such a long time ago, in a town far, far away. Well, Oxford, actually. A team called the Bath Vaders began building the furniture equivalent of the Millennium Falcon. They are engineer Chris, driver Steve and team captain Pete. We've just all started with a normal 
sort of fiberglass bath. We've gone for a quad engine. Very close to the ground and we're, we're just making up steering. It is a hybrid of, of uh, a number of things, really. Looks like the force could be with them. Now, Steve, did you actually test it on the road or indeed anywhere else before you came here? We tested it on a cart track. They did put a go-kart out to try and catch it, but they struggled. So your bath was faster than the other go-karts? It was. Get Very you. Impressed. You can feel the tension in the crowd. The competition is getting serious in this first race of our quarter-finals. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And the race is going to start in three, two, one. <laughs> it's tap to tap as they head for the clock. Oh, oh. fantastic wipe out there. The Bath Vader's overcooked him, but in no time, he's back in the chase. Oh, my oh. goodness me! Oh. Bath Vader's pushing hard to catch up. I'm really glad the rubber duck. again. He's, he's just trying too hard there. The rubber duck racers are out in front, but the Bath Vaders are closing fast as they come to the last corner. Oh, oh, oh my the lord. The is on there. Neck and neck at the end. Sassy. Would what not have amazing. believed it. That was an amazing race, really. Two crashes, and he still came so close. Really so close. What happened then? Not ideal. I just clipped the bales, came around here. I just I threw me completely out, bent all the steering. I thought I could catch him, but coming through back at the end, he just wasn't steering at all. Yo, G! G! Yo, O! O! Everybody else go! In the second of our quarterfinals, it's the Blackpool players with one of the most bizarre vehicles racing here today. They're from the land of Big Dippers and Candy Floss, and they've got a pool table that's anything but ordinary. Robert, Brian and Steve all work at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. They plan to race a petrol-powered pool table. Mastermind Robert, no stranger to Scrap Heap, as team captain of the Big Dippers, has resurrected a 42-year-old mini to give the pool table some serious poke. We've had to cut the drive shafts, cut the top and bottom arms, bring everything in, and we've turned the engine round, so the engine now is behind Steve. So all the gear linkages have had to be brought forward on push-pull uh, mechanisms. First, second, third. It's been a massive technical challenge, but are the boys from Blackpool playing to win? We will definitely win on the day. We're not just going down there to make the numbers up. But it's not going to be all fun and games for the Blackpool players. Racing against them are the home team, the Bewley Recliners. They're three tough farmers from the Bewley estate, not scared of getting their hands dirty. Brothers Mike and Martin and their mate Dave are going to use agricultural muscle to crush the fairground fairies. Small's not in my vocabulary, it's everything I do is big. Their weapon of choice is a mobile chaise long. So you called it a chaise long, so you've got to be able to spell it. They might have a posh design, but to power it, they've gone right down to earth. We have no brakes, which um, I don't think is going to be a problem because Martin doesn't normally use the brakes anyway. He'll use anything to bounce off in a car. Looks like these farm boys are out of control. Should the Blackpool players be worried? I think we're, you know, going to do really well. We're going to thrash the opposition. The Blackpool players and the Bewley recliners line up on the grid. It's the farm versus the funfair in race two of the quarterfinals. Just be gentle and give us a chance. You up? Don't make it look too embarrassing. Three, two, one. The Blackpool team are knocking the spots off the Bewley boys. And thank goodness they don't have balls on that base. Oh, they'd, be they be, the they'd be all over the shop. And it's so precise. That's it is. what I like about it. It's very neat, it's tidy. Very, very neat. It might be comfortable, but with only a lawnmower engine, the farmer's chaise long is too underpowered. The Blackpool players glide around the track to pocket certain victory. Look at that, he's very pleased with that. Did you miss me? Oh, 
Bewley recliners. Did that go quite according to plan? Very, yeah. We were hoping to have got in front of them, but um, once they got away, that was it, yeah. Everything in Bewley's done at a slower pace, you see. Our 16 teams have had over five weeks to design and build their fearsome furnishings. But yesterday, when the All-Stars began their build, in true Scrap Heap tradition, we gave them just 10 hours. Here at the Heap, the first challenge for the All-Stars is deciding what kind of donor furniture to use. Three of us got to sit on it. So it's got to be a, some sort of a settee or yeah, something, yeah, or a settee. bed? Yeah, sofa. Sofa's a good idea. What bit's going to drive them with? Well, that's the next thing, isn't it? Well, I was thinking of a transverse engine, because everything's compact. Like a Mini or something. Like the basis of the All-Stars vehicle will be a chassis driven by some kind of lightweight engine. This will be covered by a sofa carrying all three of them. But the rules state that all four wheels must be covered, so they'll need something else. And all this furniture is going to be bulky and difficult to manoeuvre. We can, we can build your city out a wee bit and get the upholsters and the... <laughs> upholsters. <laughs> <laughs> So what are the scavengers going to be hunting for? A sofa. Less engine, obviously. Steering. Maybe it's like large at the front. Well, we'd better get on and do something then, don't we? Yeah, we? yeah, yeah. right. Later on, boys. So you coming on, then? No, I'm just going to watch you. All right. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> no way. No! Oh, no, they can't even decide who's on the bike. If you think of this team as the absolute cream that Scrappy has to offer, we're in trouble, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> to the casual observer, they might look like couch potatoes, but in no time at all, our all-stars start to ferret out some useful scrap. Alrighty then. We'll see what we can do, shall us? Con spots a mini. It's got no engine. Enough, right. Here we go. But it does have a compact front subframe with suspension and steering all in one. I'll do the job when it come. With his collection of scrap building all the time, there's no stopping the big biker from Belfast. Barnsley, come and see this here. Where is he? Oh, <laughs> look oh at the big man. Oh, my God, you got a lazy turnip. But we can cut this here out yeah. and then put our base up here. Brilliant job. They've got the sofa, but without something to power it, the All-Stars won't be sitting pretty. The search is on for a practical, lightweight engine. Farmer Andy's found what he thinks is just a thing. Neil, I found a plough. Marvellous. That's just what we need. Yeah, but underneath the plough, we have got a little Citroen. Well, like a 2CV or something. Yeah, it looks like a fair tool. Be all right, I reckon. That could be ideal for it. That could that'd go underneath the sofa. That's the 2CV. I think that's going in Barnes's sofa. They're going to recreate his front room. And if you saw his front room, you realise why well, it's not going to be hard using this stuff around here. It's terrible. From the squalor of Andy's front parlour, we're back at Bewley in style with the classy electric powered dinner for one. The first competitor in race three of our quarter finals. This team from the West Midlands has real engineering pedigree. Charles, Paul and David are highly skilled Land Rover engineers. They have a plan to build the fastest dinner table in the land. We've made the drive from an electric motor from a winch uh, and then we've got V-belts which we've, we've got from the tip and we've made a frame out of scrap steel and made the steering from bits of scrap steel as well. It accelerates very quickly. We've got no gears, it's really simple to operate. You literally push the pedal, go forward, and we're away. But will the clean electric dinner table hold its own against the petrol-powered competition? Petrol engines, they've got to struggle with clutches and gears, and that's where we think we have the advantage. Competing against classy dinner for one are another team from the West Midlands. High-tech computer wizards, the Cyber Aces. 
They are Jonathan, John and Vinosh. They're mad about classic cars. But for our Sofa Speedway Challenge, they've gone for two wheels rather than four. Our plan for this competition is to build a motorcycle-powered personal computer. The vehicle that we're going to build, of course, being based on such a small motorcycle, is going to be an extremely twitchy drive. It will be interesting to see how Vin does, but on the other hand, we do know that we've got an extremely manoeuvrable vehicle. But will their pacey PC be able to handle the All-Stars? The All-Stars? They've got it all to do, haven't they? <laughs> Crash! <laughs> Reboot the machine! Now, you can see the opposition. You're up against a, a gentleman sitting at a dinner table. Do you think you're going to beat him, honestly? When we heard it was electric, we thought, yes, easy. When we saw it move, it moves quite rapidly. Who will make it to the next round? Will it be the Cyber Aces mini moto disguised as a PC or Dinner for One's electric meal on wheels? Three, a two, a one. Well, I have to say, I'm secretly rooting, you know, for the Dinner for One just because I like electric, but you know, the sheer madness, the utter madness of Cyber Aces is really proving its point. The Cyber Ace is out in front, but Vin's taking those corners very fast and starts to lose control in the chicane. Oh! Oh! He's got a oh, crash! He'll feel it tomorrow. Coming off a computer can be quite sore. <laughs> well done, that man. Beautifully won. Fantastic. <laughs> Vin! What can I say? Came off that with a bit of a bit of a bump. Yeah, I knew I was coming off over there, so <laughs> I had a bit of time to prepare. Did you think that was that was a, maybe a design fault? No, no, I just took the corner too, too fast. The cyber races may have crashed out, but they're not the only ah. bikers here at Bewley. The scrappy ball stars have arrived on two wheels as well. They're impressed by the ingenuity of our all-comers furniture, but are they intimidated? Last year in Cheltenham, Bonzi, things didn't go so well. Didn't go quite the plan, did it, really? No. <laughs> A load of rubbish. But to be this sure, year, this, is, this is agricultural engineering at its best now. <laughs> this is. We just ignore it. <laughs> yeah. Just talk dribble and we just think, yeah, whatever. So you've had a little look at the opposition. What do you reckon? Some of ours are yeah. quite quick, quite good. Good stuff, there's yeah, good stuff very good. There. How do you rate your chances realistically? Do you think you're going to win this year? Yes. Yeah. yeah, of course we are, that's why we're here. Hey, that's good. Barnsley saying nothing, oh, what do you think, Barnsley? Oh no, it's a bit like that. I think it's going to win. It's still like it's that. Still. <laughs> Barnsley's confidence is wavering for good reason. They're all strong teams and there's only one more race to go before the semi-finals. <laughs> They're three frogmen from Essex. Councillor David, Mac the Chippy and their absent buddy, lightweight Dave. With his serious carpentry skills, Mac's building the three-wheeled four-poster from scratch. Yeah. Oh, yes. It'll be like that. Oh, it's coming to me now. Pink is here. But like all politicians, Councillor Dave is more concerned about appearance than performance. Good job Mac's got a steer on the mechanics. On a single cylinder motorbike engine, I don't think we're going to worry about traction, to be honest with you. <laughs> Even with a two stroke engine carrying three bubble boys, they still reckon they'll catch the competition napping. We're going to end up with a four poster motorised double bed. We should be able to say goodnight to the opposition, mate. I think we will. <laughs> Is it basically a bed stuck on top of a motorbike? No, it's, it's a, a frame built inside a bed to take. An engine. Oh. Brilliant. Now, it is bed against bed, bed to bed, head to head. What do you reckon to your brass bed opposition? Well, I hope that Mummy's going to take him to bed and say goodnight. But the king size Coopers aren't about to retire just yet. <laughs> Deep in darkest Hertfordshire, Minnies just litter the Coopers' den. Andy, Neil, and Steve are all Mini Cooper enthusiasts, so for them, there's only one choice for the donor vehicle. As I had an old Mini 850 automatic, I thought the best thing to do is to take out the engine and gearbox, 
on its subframe and use that system not in the front of the bed but at the back so it's pushing rather than pulling. Not content with just scavenging mini bits, they've cannibalised the steering from an old lawnmower to make this divan turn on a sixpence. And they reckon it's a winner. I think if the, if the vehicle's reliable, I think we've got a very good chance and give the All-Stars a good run for their money. What have you got under there? Can we have a little look? <laughs> you got your steering wheel, a couple of brake pedals and an accelerator. Now, did you manage to test this out before you came here today? We did have a test. It got a bit wobbly the first time, but then we uh, played with the suspension because we got adjustable height on here. And uh, things have settled down a lot more now and uh, raring re re to go. Two well-matched high-speed beds lie waiting on the starting grid. Only one will go through to the semi-final. For the other, it'll be lights out. Three, two, one! <laughs> These beds are moving at an incredible speed down the street. The Bubble Boys fans are going crazy. The Bubble Boys are caught napping at the wheel and lightweight Dave's been rudely awoken. As the Coopers build up a king-size lead, the Bubble Boys try a new tactic, demolishing the course. Oh, the Bubble Boys are kangaroo! Here he comes, oh, look at that race. Nice. Wow, beautiful Fantastic. bit of driving. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes! Wow. <laughs> and what a finish. <laughs> oh, Bubble Boys! <laughs> bubble Boys, Bubble Boys. Bubbles out first. <laughs> now, are you all right, first of all, with what we're yeah, falling out of bed? We've just broken a record. What's that? We're the first people to get four posts of bed to wheelie. <laughs> With the Bubble Boys put soundly to bed, the lineup for the semi final looks like this. Yes! The king size Coopers will take on dinner for one, and the rubber duck racers will challenge the Blackpool players. But only one of these furniture racers will take on the scrappy All Stars in our grand final. <laughs> the All-Stars return from their scavenge with the last of their key mechanical components. They're hoping to drive their way to victory on a giant sofa powered by a 2CV engine. Yeah, I thought, you know, when the car came in, I thought, I'll give you an hour to get the front off. Yeah, it's I just you about to... a minute and a half. Just get this. Ah. That's better. It's air-cooled, isn't it? It's a real bonus it's air-cooled, because we can do all the radiator and... Yeah. So you'll build this underneath your furniture then, is that the... Uh, yeah, we take the filters off. Right. Which will lose us another couple of inches. Yeah. Will you use the steering on this or will you lock... No, this is going to go at the back. Right. And then the front end, the subframe off, uh, front subframe off a Mini. Right. Which has got all the steering mechanism in it. Right. As a whole unit. So we can just weld that straight under. The All-Stars plan to put the compact air-cooled engine at the back of their vehicle, with the Mini subframe and steering bolted on the front. But the engine is designed to go in the front of a 2CV, not at the back of a collection of scraps smothered by a giant sofa. Burying an air-cooled engine under all that upholstery could make it overheat and conk out in the heat of the race. So you've got to cut all this off now? Then. I'm just going to cut through underneath here. When, they, when right. the boys come back, I think the best thing will be to flip it over on its side. But flipping the Citroen calls for more muscle than Neil and Andy can muster. No! Where's the big man? Uh, here he is. Neil sets to work butchering the froggy runabout. And in no time, the motor hops out. Look at that. Do you think we should try and start it? Uh, you know, I've got a lot of faith in these French machines. I haven't. That 2CV engine's been on the heat for years, yet Neil doesn't want to test it. Hmm, I'm with Con. I'm just concerned how we're going to hide it all. Let's not concern about it. Let's get the chassis into that, so they're annoying. And then see what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, let's just get a chassis built so we can, we can start putting things together, because at the moment we've done nothing. We aren't, have us. Neil and Andy set to work slotting together the skeleton of their monster furniture vehicle. 
All right. Two, six. <sighs> Lovely. Oh, your ass dripping. The comfy beast starts to take shape. Yeah. They've got a sofa covering the engine, but they still need something to cover the front subframe. And it needs to be functional as well. Well, I mean, it'd be um, nice to have a bit of suspension, though, wouldn't it? The only thing on, is... It depends on what goes on. But the suspension won't work because you've got no weight on it. That's right. Neil's right. Unless they can find a piece of furniture heavy enough to compress the front springs, they'll be in for a very bumpy ride. Something really heavy is going to make the suspension work, but... Until we work out what we're going to hide that in, no. We can't do anything. We can't do anything. No, I need to know what that's going to go in. In the hope that Andy can find the all-important ballast, Neil and Con start to set up the mobile sofa's front suspension. Andy picks up some handy mini wheels. Before finding something he hopes will be music to his teammates' ears. Go ahead, tell us what you find. What about that? Don't that sound good? <laughs> it's best. No, no, no. I be gonna bring him back. I don't care what you say. We want that. Andy, we're not listening to you. You gotta listen to me. Take your piano and take it somewhere else. <laughs> Andy may not have Con and Neil singing along, yeah. but the piano completes the All Stars wish list. <laughs> All they need now is an engine that goes. It's time to fire it up. There's there's fuel coming here now, or something's happening. Try again. Well, there was me worrying about the furniture, but I think uh, maybe they need to sort out the engine first. <laughs> <laughs> Back at Bewley, two teams with engines raring to go are lining up for the first race of our semi-finals. It's the rubber duck racers from Yeovil in their beefed-up bathroom against the Blackpool players driving their pokey pool table. Both seriously capable competitors, but only one with a place in our final. They are going to start in three, two, one. Right from the start, the rubber duck racers are destroying the course. The Blackpool players are rocketing ahead. It seems like they are unstoppable. Oh, oh we've had a spill of the black. Oh, oh what a dude, shame. He was going so well. Far too hard. Let's hope he's all right. Whoa. Driver Steve took the first hairpin too fast, and the Blackpool players roll out of the race. Whoa. The bathroom also looks seriously damaged. There's a lot of cracked tiles, but the rubber duck racers managed to wing it across the line. That's a right old state. There's a lot of grouting to be done there. A lot of grouting. That was nothing short of carnage. It was a little dramatic, wasn't it? What on earth happened there? I just lost control going round the corner. I could hear the, uh, the bathtub coming up behind me and thought I could just hold it a bit longer into the corner, and I think I miscalculated. Well, as long as you're in one piece, yeah, that's yeah, the most yeah, important thing. Bruised ego. With favourites, the Blackpool players crashing out in spectacular fashion, it's all to play for. The last of the semi-finals sees the flying electric dinner table Dinner for one, up against the brass divan with mini engine, the king sized Coopers. You will start on the sound of the horn, which will come in three, two, one. Electric powered Dinner for One's had a slow takeoff. The Coopers are roaring into the lead. Absolutely. But the petrol powered Coopers have to sustain that lead. The Dinner for One are definitely, they're slightly gaining. The king size Coopers have built up a king size lead. It'll take nothing short of disaster to snatch victory from them now. That three wheel bed is roaring to victory. Look at that. Fantastic. We have a very genteel race yet again. Very genteel there. Full of manners. Come dinner to one. Hey. Well done, sir. <laughs> so now we have our two finalists the king sized Coopers and the rubber duck racers. Which one will face our All-Stars in the ultimate race? Well, All-Stars, the grand final is looming. Now, these upholster machines are quite something, aren't they? But yeah. you had your fair share of problems during yeah. your 10-hour build. <laughs>
When we left the All-Stars, they were struggling to bring the 2CV motor back to life. They've abandoned their engine woes for now and retrieved Barnes's piano. They're hoping it'll provide weight for the front suspension and some entertainment. But it also brings a whole new set of problems. So how, how wide is this? 150. 150? 115. And what's the wheelbase of this? One, 130. Yes, so it's going to have to be mounted in front of it. The piano's too wide. They'd have to hack it to bits to make it fit. But with time running out, they've decided to change the layout and bolt the piano way out in front, outside the wheelbase, potentially making the vehicle more unstable. A lot of weight hanging out over the front. There's a lot of weight in the back. We're also at the back. We're so sat in the back. There's loads of weight in the back. Yeah. And it's you so need short. The, you, you need the counterbalance because it's so short. They've talked themselves into the new configuration and plough on regardless. They adapt the chassis to the new layout. It may not have been the bad idea of this piano after all, then. The piano's not just for Andy's amusement. It will provide enough weight on the front to make the suspension work. Think you're going to be able to see where you'll be going to? I'll have to look around the sides. <laughs> They've got the suspension sorted, but there's still one problem that won't go away. Just try it on there. I mean, I think it's really interesting that Con has quite a kind of laughy, jokey attitude to the whole thing, as does Andy Barnes, yeah. seemingly, whereas Neil really shows his feelings like Neil's he's a worrying, bit more worried. It? It's just at it. Mm -hmm. I'm slightly worried about the engine because that is just such a classic thing that the engine they haven't had the engine going. That is that is page one of the scrap heap textbook. Get engine in, test yeah. it runs. Or we we'll let them charge for a minute or two and see what he does. Yeah. Try that. And yet they've attached it to the car and to the it's piano and they've got to make it run. I mean they're really good. They'll work it out, I know, but it just is. Do you want to get the settee and just see how it looks? I don't know which way you want to Let's go do that. first. Let's go and get the sofa, eh? But just like the piano, the sofa's the wrong size. Surely somebody measured it, didn't they? Emergency carpentry is the last thing they need, but they have to make the sofa fit over the engine. The gear lever we can just I mean, put just straight through the... Through the set lever, Through the set through the sponge. Yes. yes. And With every almost... single area of the build causing them problems, it seems only fair to add one more to the list. Uh, all stars, all stars. I have an announcement for you. You're not going to like it, but you have three hours remaining. Only three hours <laughs> remaining, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Excitement has reached fever pitch as the vehicles prepare for this penultimate race between the bathroom and the bed. You will start this final race in three, two, one. <laughs> Both vehicles are off to a good start. The rubber ducks are catching up. Either side of the... Oh! Oh, a bit of a crunch there. He does like driving he into likes this He crunching course. into that very much. The, uh, the rubber duck racers are just driving into everything. Neil is way out in front with billowing sheets. It's another dream race for the king-size Coopers. King-size Coopers have taken it! Neil's on the end there, but fantastic race up. Brilliant race. At last, we have a champion worthy of taking on our scrappy ball stars. But yesterday, racing was the last thing on their minds. Neil, Con, and Andy were trying to bury their troublesome engine under a chopped up sofa in a clash between mechanical muscle and cavalier carpentry. Who's your steering wheel? How's that? <laughs> The wobbly steering might be a laugh, but an engine that won't run is no joke. It's running at the bottom of the carb right now. How the hell is it coming out of the bottom of the carb? Well, the intake manifold's down here, isn't there? I expect there's a bit of a hole in the bottom of them somewhere. Well, there doesn't want to be a hole. The All-Stars have finally cracked the fault with the engine. 
they found a hole in the pipe which takes fuel into the combustion chamber. Too much air is being sucked in with the fuel, which means the engine won't start. <sighs> Already, engine expert Neil's got a plan to yeah. plug the hole and get the engine running. Yes, you can look down, then we could weld the top of the hole on the inside or fill it up with liquid metal or something. There he is. With the engine problems finally sorted, there's precious little time left. Shake that engine, all stars! You have just one hour remaining. That's one right, hour, just boys. 60 minutes till you're through. It's time for the all stars to get this build sewn up. It's all out, isn't it? You could play the best with your foot. You take your shoe off, look, you could you wiggle your toes. <laughs> Neil, it does seem a little bit obvious to test the engine before you put it in. Yeah, it's a mess around quite a bit, but we got her in the end. So you think it's performing all right now? It's sound now, yes, yeah, it's in the bars. Well, look, I think it's about time you revealed it. Let's have a look at your wonderful creation. Come on, All Stars. With a couple of hours tinkering time, a lick of paint and some skillful work with the staple gun, the All Stars sofa now really looks the business. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Were the flowers your idea, Con? No, they? definitely not. No, they were your idea. No, they weren't. Like, huh? No, they weren't. They were. There's no time to argue, boys. This is the most important race of the day. The grand final between the king-sized Coopers and the scrappy ball stars. Pretty in pink and raring to go. I just come over to wish these boys good luck. Oh, Barnsley, Thank good boy. <laughs> Don't go piano. too fast, because I might do a few bum notes around the corners. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go steady. We need to get you on your piano. Now, come on. Good luck, guys. With their mini-powered brass bed, the Coopers have seen off the best of the fast furniture racing here today. They've also built up massive support in the crowd. But the All-Stars aren't intimidated. It's showtime. This race will start in three, two, one. <laughs> Both teams get off to a flying start. The All-Stars are not going to let the Coopers pass without a fight. The Coopers are closing the gap, but then oh, disaster. Oh, Shunted off the road right there. It's a little rude, I think. The All-Stars have got a problem with that troublesome engine. Is he going to squeeze through? He squeezed for oh, The crowd He's going to be popular. The Coopers are fighting back and pulling out in front. And Neil, just, he's absolutely... The king-size Cooper, he's just sailing ahead now. The Coopers have lost control again. If he doesn't get past the finish, oh, they now going, so the All-Stars awesome. are now going like the clappers. The All-Stars are underway again and closing fast. Con's really leaning into those bends. Oh, my word! Oh, oh dear, that looked very, very serious. The Coopers are back in the race and heading for the finish line. What an incredible grand final that was. The All-Stars and the King-Size Coopers had us on the edge of our seats with some hair-raising thrills and some dramatic spills. In the end, it was Andy's piano that toppled the All-Stars' chances of victory. Well done, All-Stars, but the winners, undoubtedly and terribly deservedly, are the King-Size Coopers! <laughs> Join us again next time when Scrappy goes on the road to the great Dorset Steam Fair, where we'll have a really good time, oh yes. But for now, from the National Military Museum at Bewley, it's goodbye. Next time, there'll be wellies flying in all directions as teams from across the country pitch up at the Great Dorset Steam Fair to try and outfling the All-Stars in our great welly-wanging 